um, the um, some of the terrorism recently, and suddenly this guy comes out, Trump, starts saying a few things that would have felt right to the default position, and that pulls you back in, and you start talking from ear instead of ear, um, and that's been quite a quite a revelation to 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 witness some of that, um, and uh, Trump could not care less about anyone except himself. That, that's the, what comes over to me. And so whatever Trump does and whatever Trump says is in some way designed to serve his interests. And um, if he became president of the United States, there would be mayhem in the world beyond anything we've seen up to this point. Um, he is the living, breathing proof, in my view, that you do not have to be intelligent in the true sense of the term to become a multi-billionaire. And um, we'll see where it goes from here. Um, because if he gets the nomination, well, that's one go from here. If he doesn't, but stands as an independent, just as this guy Ross Perot did back in the days of, um, of Clinton, Bill Clinton, then we'll see another where we go from here. And that will be dividing the Republican vote, which will let Madam Hillary Clinton in. Um, because what Ross Perot did was stand as an independent and his natural voting constituency was Republicans and he split the Republican vote and Bill Clinton got in. And I would strongly suggest that wasn't by accident. So um, where it goes from here will you know, be interesting to, to see but the idea that Donald Trump is different and is against the system is nonsense. You know, people have to be careful in not relating um, what people say to what it appears to be saying. For example, um, if you attack Say you, you attack the Jewish community. On the face of it, you've attacked the Jewish community. Dead simple. But what if... I'm not saying this in terms of Trump. I'm giving an example of how this whole um, game works. What if it would benefit you to be seen as against the Jewish community when you're not? what would you do? You'd say things that, on the face of it, were against the Jewish community, or any other community, come to that, it, that was relevant to what you wanted. But those within the Jewish community, or within th this other community, those that actually know the game, as opposed to the, the mass, they know that you're only saying it for effect. And, you know, there's so many people that have been controlled by this group, whatever it is, who have attacked this group. And what do people think in the public arena? He's against that group. I support him. Actually, he's controlled by that group. So when, when what people say needs to be taken with not just a pinch of salt, but um, um, a truckload. And let action speak, not words. Because um, Trump is um, very, very bad news on so many levels. And so many in the alternative research community in America um, would say, that's nonsense. He's, he, he's saying the right things. He's saying what he thinks he needs to say and probably what others have told him he needs to say to get the outcome that he wants. And what that outcome is, we'll, we'll see in the coming weeks. 
Um, and uh, going on from that, there's another question from uh, Nels um, and Oman. Which American presidential candidate would you vote for? Well, I, I, actually, there's another one here. Let, let's bring these together. From Tom Good, Jeremy Corbyn, uh, Messiah, or, quote, another very naughty boy. Um, well, let's pull this together, because it's kind of interesting. Jeremy Corbyn is, for people around the world, the recently elected, back in September I think he was, around that time, um, leader of the opposition Labour Party in Britain. And um, he has argued against um, Britain a bombing in Syria. He clearly has um, genuine uh, concern for those suffering from this systematic um, program of austerity, poverty, deprivation going on in Britain. And for that reason, those reasons, I welcomed the fact that he um, was the elected leader of the Labour Party. And the reason he was elected was the rank-and-file members of the Labour Party all over the country, not the members of Parliament, um, which he now leads, um, because they mostly can't stand the guy and what he stands for. And the reason I welcome him as um, the leader of the Labour Party is because it means we're going to have at least, at least some kind of debate over um, austerity and over um, war. And we did have that. We had debate and the much more questioning um, of the uh, bombing of Brit British bombing in Syria because Corbyn was leader. Of course, he was ignored by enough of his members of parliament who voted with the, the government party, the Conservative Party of David Cameron, to actually get parliament to agree to bombing in Syria. But at least we had some kind of debate, which we would not have had otherwise. Because what would have uh, uh, happened if, if, if another Labour MP that stood for the leadership had got in, it would have been nodded through bombing in Syria. Because when you look at the vast um, number of Labour MPs um, and virtually all Conservative MPs and what's left of the Liberal Democratic MPs, the third party, um, they are the one-party state. The so-called consensus in what they all agree on, and bombing in Syria would have been one of them, indeed it was even though Corbyn was leader, um, is, is there. So it's a one-party state. Same in, in America, of course, with the Republicans and the um, Democrats. And one of the candidates standing for the leadership of the, or the um, presidency, the presidential nomination for the Democratic Party against Hillary Clinton is Bernie Sanders. And he is a kind of Corbyn character in that by um, Capitol Hill terms, he does have some sort of heart for people who are struggling. And he has most certainly um, understood and been the man probably more than anyone else, and there haven't been many, who has stood up and exposed the true nature of the banks and the bankers and the corporations and the stitch-ups and its impact upon the American population. So, I, I would say that the person I would say I would vote for if, if I had to in the American um, 
presidential uh, election would be Bernie Sanders. And if I voted for anyone in Britain currently, it would be for Jeremy Corbyn. However, but, and a very, very big but, um, I wouldn't vote for either of them. Um, in the sense of believing that they were going to change anything. Because within this web of deceit and conspiracy and corruption, it's, it's multifaceted. So, um, Jeremy Corbyn has disconnected and is challenging that web, that agenda, in terms of um, bombing and war, and in terms of um, the austerity program. Bernie Sanders is disconnected and is challenging that web, that agenda, from the point of view of the behaviour, manipulation and corruption of bankers and corporations. Fair enough, round of applause. But unless you take a big step back and do research across the subjects to the point where you see what the game is, A, where they want the outcome to, to um, arrive at, uh, and the manipulative techniques to get people there, then even though austerity and bombing Syria won't get you, even though in Sanders' case um, the banking scam won't get you, other parts of the web will get you. Because you won't realise there is a web. Thus you won't realise that global warming, drone bombing, etc, etc are as much part of this web as austerity, bombing in Syria and the banking system. And so when I look at um, Jeremy Corbyn, I applaud, for reasons that I've said, some of the things he's standing for and challenging. But at the same time, he's very pro, we must do something about um, global warming. And what is intended to be done to protect the world from global warming, which is actually a scam, is to transform the world into a centralised fascist communist dictatorship of centralised control, which is everything that, in terms of austerity, etc., and government, Jeremy Corbyn would not win in terms of his effect on people and more poverty and more deprivation. And Bernie Sanders is, um, is supporting things that are all part of the web and part of the agenda while challenging the banking part. So, while, you know, it's to be applauded that they are there and in their way and in their, in their own limited area of how they see the world, um, they are challenging things that I think need challenging. The idea that they will change anything unless they see the web is, um, is simply um, not going to happen. And um, before politicians are going to change anything of significance, they've got to see the big picture and where it's designed to go and how it's taking us there. And then maybe um, they can have an impact of significance. But until then, no chance. No chance. Um, 
Oh yeah, um, Mary Marks. What do I think of the PTT trade deal? Um, the, the, these trade deals, the transatlantic, transpacific trade deals, are being negotiated in secret because if the public knew about them, um, there would be no need for hair curlers. The hair curling industry would go out of business. Um, what is being negotiated in secret is to transform the world as always planned and has been in my books all these years is to transform the world into a corporation controlled society where corporations who have far far more resources and money and wealth than um, most governments um, they uh, will have the ability to go to a world corporate court and take governments um, to court for doing things that um, the corporations don't like. What is being negotiated are laws of copyright that are so outrageous, so extreme, so mind-blowing in the idea that they could even be considered, never mind agreed. But as um, a, a story on my website in the last few days pointed out, um, if certain things go ahead, and not just within the trade deals, but within the European Union, um, and they're all connected, of course, it's all part of the same web of centralised control, um, that even taking pictures of things that you own could be breach of copyright and find yourself in legal action. They're stitching up the world. That's what these trade deals are doing. And the idea is to negotiate them in secret, pass them through as quick as possible through the um, parliaments and Congress, that they become law of the land before anyone's really conned on to what it means. And we saw this with the, um, the European Union. You know, things would be passed through and passed through and passed through and it would be covered by the media. Oh, yeah, this, this has been passed or that's been passed. Oh, yeah, well, what was it? No debate that people have any say in um, I'm contributing to. And then people go down the shops or they go about their work and they say, what do you mean? We, we can't do this anymore. Well, that's bad. That's illegal. What's, what's happened? What's happened? Well, what's happened? It's all been done in secret. And it's been pushed through very, very quickly. So now it's law of the land and you are subjected to it with, without you even realising it's happened until you're faced with it. This is what's planned with these uh, trade deals. And um, they are um, chilling in what they um, plan to introduce. And, you know, I, I have felt, um, and I've said for a long time, that um, 2016, 2017, 2018 are going to decide the long-term future of human society. They really are. And... Um, we must start um, making all this the priority of our lives. Because if we put anything before it, even, even family, family occasions, whatever, if something else needs doing, we may think we're doing the right thing in the short term, but in the longer term, we're not. Um, the work that I do means that I miss things, family things that um, others would, would, would not miss. But my um, attitude is this. My biggest contribution to, for instance, my grandkids and my, my children 
is to do everything I can to head off and alert people so it's headed off um, what is planned for this world and what's unfolding by the day that's my big biggest contribution and that's my focus and so if I have to miss this family occasion or that family occasion because um, this is something I have to do to advance that um, that, that goal that I have then that will have to happen because when when if should my grandkids for instance say to me some time from now what were you doing granddad when um, when all this was coming in I don't want to have to say nothing but I did attend the school play I want to say everything I bloody could darling and that is I would suggest where, where we need to go from here make this the priority because if we don't then um will take the consequences but I am very very optimistic that we are starting to move towards um, a point where the numbers of people in, in awareness that the world's not like they thought it was is starting to reach a point where it can have some kind of impact because this this is the epicenter of um, heading this off and the more that can be involved in that the more that can look and say how do I contribute and do it the more um, likely obviously it is that this will be headed off